Academic freedom is defined by the landmark American Association of University Professors 1940 Statement of Principles on Academic Freedom and Tenure. Academic freedom gives professors the right to pursue research and publish its results. Academicians have freedom in the classroom to determine their pedagogy. They have the right to speak and write as citizens and should be free from institutional censorship or discipline. Several years ago, I was suspended and reprimanded by President Richard Yanakowski of St. Xavier University for sending an irate anti-war email in response to an Air Force Academy cadet's solicitation that I recruit students to attend a conference on that campus. Instead, I denounced American imperialism, including the mistreatment of the Palestinians and the 1991 General Barry McCaffrey mass murder of retreating Iraqi soldiers at Basra during the Persian Gulf War. The cadet was not a student of mine and was not associated in any manner with St. Xavier University. I refused the cadet's invitation to recruit my students for a conference there and denounce violence and the academic emphasis on killing that debases and demeans our purpose on this planet. The Wall Street Journal in two editorials supported my removal from the classroom three weeks before final exams. The Chicago Tribune and Sun Times covered the story, as did WGN Radio and many television stations. The Weekly Standard, FrontPageMag.com, and Conservative Talk Radio picked up, piled on, and celebrated my suspension or demanded my dismissal. I could have been more polite and I apologize for the tone, but here is the email that found its way to U.S. military forces stationed throughout the empire, who then sent thousands of emails to President Yanukowski seeking my firing. Quote, you are a disgrace to this country, and I'm furious you would even think I would support you and your aggressive baby-killing tactics of collateral damage. Help you recruit who? Top guns to rain death and destruction upon non-white peoples throughout the world? Are you serious, sir? No war, no Air Force cowards who bomb countries without AAA, without possibility of retaliation. You are imperialists who are turning the whole damn world against us. September 11 can be blamed in part for what you and your cohorts have done to the Palestinians, the Viet Cong, the Serbs, a retreating army at Basra. You are unworthy of my support. Sincerely yours. I, I haven't read this. I'll had a conference since I spoke at NYU a few years ago. Um, the public clamored that I could not teach effectively due to left-wing bias that was anti-American and anti-military. Mr. Yanukowski stated my email was not protected by academic freedom because it was uncivil. See, that's that's the new code now. University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, Berkeley, it's not civility. freedom because it was uncivil. See, that's, that's the new code now. University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, Berkeley, it's not civility. I was tenured and was able to hang on to my job. Stephen Salida was tenured too, but was caught in the web of bureaucratic technicalities 
when Dr. Wise and Christopher G. Kennedy, chair of the University of Illinois Board of Trustees, violated his First Amendment guarantees of free speech and AAUP guidelines by claiming they could revoke, vacate a written contract offer some 10 months after it was returned. Tonight, and as long as it takes, I will stand by Professor Salida and work to end this terrible injustice and vindictive treatment of a professor who displayed emotion while denouncing Israel's violation of non-combatant immunity. Not much of academic freedom is left in this country, particularly if one wishes to engage in a critical manner the founding of the State of Israel and its conduct since its establishment in 1948. We have the American Association of University Professors and the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, known as FIRE. While AAUP is improving, it is improving, FIRE has a quicker response time and embraces direct action tactics. AAUP until recently seemed uncomfortable in generating and protecting speech that was critical of the prescribed narrative on the Middle East. Before the Salida case, the biggest case in the United States was at DePaul University with regard to Norman Finkelstein. AAUP was rather tepid in its uh, addressing that tenure travesty. The Salida case, however, has induced a more vibrant and energized AAUP defense of its own values. AAUP, the American Association of University Professors, exercises soft law uh, that emerged over decades in documents and reports in the Red Book that serves as the common law for higher education. Illinois AAUP Committee A on Academic Freedom and Tenure issued the first formal academic statement on the Salida case within hours of the Inside Higher Ed article on August 6th, Hiroshima Day, and played a key role along with PFAC in the Ayman Shahada controversy that many here are familiar with. The Salida firing, the Shahadi Israeli Palestinian course section cancellation, which was restored, and my suspension represent an assault on academic freedom both inside and outside the classroom. The three of us challenged the ruling elites of universities and colleges that wish to suppress a narrative that challenges the prevailing orthodoxy on the Middle East or American imperialism and its thirst for perpetual war and racist empire. Academic freedom generally exists for those who don't need it <laughs> and is abandoned and marginalized for those who do. Professor Salida had the First Amendment, whether you agree or disagree with everything that he said, he had and has the First Amendment constitutional right as a professor at a public university to express those views as he did. He was a passionate defender of the defenseless as bombs were blasting over and among a poor and terrified population in Gaza. He expressed anti-war outrage with children being bombed, families destroyed, electric power stations and houses leveled by American manufactured fighter jets. While Dr. Salida's language was described in the Illinois Committee A report as, quote, strident and vulgar, the University of Illinois chose to decontextualize them from other tweets that stressed reconciliation between Muslim and Jew and that denounced anti-Semitism. I have yet to hear Chancellor Wise denounce anti-Arab racialism. I doubt if Professor Salida had aimed his tweets against the United States, whether we would even be here tonight. What is so disturbing about the Salida dismissal case 
is that the University of Illinois bypassed the American Indian Studies hiring process and cavalierly made egregious assumptions about his teaching objectivity based on 140 character tweets. Neither my email to the Air Force Academy or Stevens' tweets, which are extramural utterances, have any bearing on one's fitness in the classroom. Peer review classroom visits, asking a job candidate to give a guest lecture, examining syllabi and student course evaluations are how professionals evaluate teaching, not ideologically driven administrators who are fearful of losing funding. They acted in an unprofessional manner. And this is most disheartening when administrators of a major university act in a manner that violates the professional requirements in higher education. Caving into fundraisers and email campaigns from pro-Israel groups to deny students from receiving a balanced view of the Middle East conflict was the real reason for the summary dismissal of Dr. Salaya. In 1970, AAUP revised the 1940 Statement of Principles on academic freedom and tenure that is relevant to the Salida case. Quote, paragraph three of the section on academic freedom in the 1940 statement should also be interpreted in keeping with the 1964 Committee A statement on extramural utterances, which states, the controlling principle is that a faculty member's expression of opinion as a citizen cannot constitute grounds for dismissal unless it clearly demonstrates the faculty member's unfitness for his or her position. Extramural utterances rarely bear upon the faculty member's fitness for the position. Moreover, a final decision should take into account the faculty member's entire record as a teacher and scholar. The University of Illinois chose to ignore all of it. And that is another reason why they behaved, not Professor Salida, in a manner that was less than professional. As I conclude this with a few more paragraphs, thank you for being so patient. As Illinois AAUP Committee A noted in its statement defending Professor Salida's academic freedom and right to academic due process, if I'm quoting from our, our statement, we are unaware that the university has afforded Prof. Professor Salida any due process. In the absence of due process, particularly if a contract were signed, any institutional action to reverse an offer of appointment would be a grave violation of academic freedom. Furthermore, there is nothing in the Salida statements about Israel or Zionism that would raise questions about his fitness to teach. These statements were not made in front of students, are not related to a course that is being currently taught, and do not reflect in any manner his quality of teaching. What one says out of class, rarely in the absence of peer review of teaching, confirms how one teaches in class. <laughs> a passion about a topic, even if emotionally expressed through social network, does not allow one to draw inferences about teaching that could possibly rise to the voiding or reversal of a job appointment. Well, we'll see what happens next. I predict, speaking only for myself, there will be an AAUP investigation and a recommendation for censure of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign if there is not a restoration of Professor Salida's position as a tenured associate professor in the American Indian Studies program. That's where he belongs, and we need to keep the pressure on and the dream alive that justice will prevail. So thank you very much.